Thank you, Sue, for playing so beautifully. Actually, Sue's not really here. That was, that was recorded ahead of time. The whole service we're doing today is recorded ahead of time. If you're watching this on Sunday morning in your PJs, drinking coffee, so am I. I'll be sitting at home on Sunday morning in my PJs drinking coffee. We're here on Friday afternoon with a crew of hardworking people putting, putting the, the service together and with some loyal, lovely faces in the congregation so that we're not doing this all to an empty room. And it's lovely to have, them, have everybody here. A couple of announcements. Um, one is to, to remind everybody that we're not able to have an in-person Christmas Eve service this year. As an alternative, we're offering a drive-by or drive-through nativity. So on Christmas Eve, between 6 and 7.30, you'll be invited to come into the parking lot through the, el the elevator to the handicapped entrance. And if you've brought any donations of food for the Harrow Food Bank or for the community pantry, we'll take them right out of your trunk. And then we'll offer you a gift bag that contains uh, some, some goodies from the church, including some homemade cookies. From there, you drive to the back of the parking lot where you'll be able to see our live nativity with animals and people, but you have to stay in your car. But you'll be able to roll your windows down a little bit and listen to our carolers who are going to be projected on a big screen with big speakers outside so you can hear some Christmas music while you look at the nativity. After that, you make your way out of the parking lot and, and home for Christmas Eve. Let's prepare for worship. We start with the tiniest spark that ignites the fuel to make the flame, that heats the wick to melt the wax. To light the candle, to brighten the room, to push back the gloom. The light of our lives is love. We seek the warmth and the glow of God's love. We wait now for the birth of Jesus, the little one with big news, who comes into the world and into our hearts. Join me now in a moment of prayerful silence that begins and ends with the ringing of our prayer bell. Love. What is love? Maybe love is like a chick, freshly hatched. The chick needs us for everything. And we gladly do everything for them. They change our whole world and everything around us. Even though they're loud and demanding, and can't yet say please or thank you. We love them and care for them as best we can. Maybe love is like new life that needs us all to grow.
Today, our body prayer for love has a few more actions in it, so I hope you're ready for it, but you've had lots of practice the last few weeks. We had our body prayer of hope, our body prayer of peace, our bubbly joy, and today is love. And love is like over our heart. It's similar to peace. Okay, now, today we have to talk about love. It's going to be in our heart. This is kind of hard for some people to do, to make a heart. We want our love to be in our actions. We want our love to be in what we say and what we do. Okay? So those are the actions you're going to be doing today. And remember, your arms are going to be moving, so don't hit anything in your house. Are you ready? Holy One, may your love be in my head and my heart. May your love be in my actions. May your love be in all I say and do. Amen. I like that. May, our, may your love be in our actions and in what we say and what we do. When we make offerings, we give things to help others. We do things to help others. We say things, we say kind things to help others. We have many ways to make offerings to contribute to God's work in the world. This is our dedication prayer for all those offerings. We who are so blessed seek to bless others. We give of our time, our money, our creativity. We offer leadership, compassion, and sometimes hard work. Sometimes we give less than we could. Sometimes we give more than we can afford. Sometimes we doubt that what we're able to do could ever make a difference, but it does. We do. With your help, God, our giving makes us different for the giving. Our giving makes the world different. We ask God to bless it all. Amen.
The scripture readings this morning are taken from Deuteronomy 32, chapter, chapter 32, verses 10 to 11. I'm reading from the Inclusive Bible. God adopted you in a desert country, in a barren and howling waste. God shielded you and cared for you, guarding you as an apple of the eye. Like the eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, God spreads wings to catch you and carries you on pinions. The second reading is taken from Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, and I'm reading from the message. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from Galilee, town of Nazareth, up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. There were shepherd herders, sheep herders, camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angels said, Don't be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody. Worldwide, a Savior has just been born in David's town a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you, you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights, peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself, the sheep herders returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they had been told.
Thank you, Larry. So when Larry's playing and the words are up on the screen, do you hear the words in your head? Especially for the ones we know really well? It's kind of a way to, to actually pray or meditate on the words. One of the things about uh, doing the service this way, you know, on most Sunday mornings, if whoever's on the soundboard doesn't like what I'm saying, they can just turn it right down. Because Dennis is editing the whole video. If I say things or do things he doesn't like, they're gone. He'll just take them right out and put in something else. So I'll be interested to see on Sunday morning what, what, what I actually said. Dennis, can you show that video for us now? Stephanie's very talented. Dennis and I have been looking for a way to use Stephanie's video as part of a worship service ever since her proud mother, Laureen, shared it with us. I emailed Stephanie to ask permission to use it, and when I did that, I noticed that her email includes the, the nickname Lil Chick, which, of course, makes me think of the first video we watched this morning. Love is like a little chick hatching from an egg, and needing to be cared for in the nest. Well, Stephanie is like a lot of grown birds that went off to university and college, never imagining the year we were going to have, and not expecting to be back quite so soon in mom and dad's nest. We have a couple of those birds at home at our house these days. Lexi and I are happy to have them, and it's not what any one of us expected. 
So like Stephanie's movie reminds us, we make adjustments. I don't know if it always went smoothly at Stephanie's house or whether sometimes some birds got their feathers ruffled. I know at my house there have been days and evenings when we wish the nest was a little bigger or maybe had soundproof rooms. The younger birds stay up later than the old ones. But we make it work. We make adjustments because we love each other. We put up with stuff. We get over things. There's a lot that's happening these days for most of us. Life is not going the way we imagined. Things we've been looking forward to have been put on hold or canceled altogether. It tests our patience, challenges our ability to shrug things off, makes people sad, sometimes cranky. Turn on the news or look at the computer for a while and you see a lot and you hear a lot of people complaining, second-guessing, blaming, backseat driving. It's easy, I think, to be loving and generous and friendly and patient and kind when things are going our way. When there's trouble or even just inconvenience and disappointment, we have to dig a little deeper to find the capacity to cut each other some slack, to be respectful to remember that everyone's got sadness, everyone's got suffering, everyone's got trouble in their lives. I take great comfort and hope and inspiration from imagining Jesus being born and wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger. Maybe the manger was padded with hay. Maybe it looked a little bit like a nest. Jesus came into the world under less than ideal conditions. The world back then was kind of a mess. A corrupt local government, manipulated by the Roman Empire, made life hard for many people, especially the poor folks. There was a privileged ruling class who did very well, and a lot of peasants left scratching away like hens in the dirt, trying to make a living. There were wars and racism, and crime, and violence. There were diseases we've never heard of, never had to deal with. Life was hard for most people. And in the midst of all that mess, Jesus was born, a vulnerable little chick, placed in a makeshift little nest, and in need of love and care. I remember when each of our children Our little chicks were born. They were born under much better conditions than Joseph and Mary could provide. At the same, all the same, at each birth, I felt a mix of gratitude and fear, excitement and anxiety at the tremendous gift and the awesome responsibility of caring for a new life. Their vulnerability worked its influence on me. Each time I prayed, God help us, God help me. I think the vulnerability of those we love and the the inadequacy we may feel to protect and care for them is a deep, visceral prayer that connects us by love to the source of all love. God is love. Jesus is born, and God enters the world in a way that reaches us, not just through our minds, but through our deeper selves, our hearts, our guts. Babies and little chicks, they're messy and noisy and wonderful and need a lot of help, especially in the beginning. You often hear that new babies don't come with an instruction manual. You can get a lot of books and find lots of advice online, but That's not how all the learning comes. Each child is a teacher. We learn from them how to care for them as we learn who they are. The relationship changes us as the love grows. We often hear it said that God was born into the world at the first Christmas or that love was born that day. That's that's kind of true. 
but also confusing because God was already in the world before Jesus was born. And love was already in the world before Jesus was born. There were lots of babies, lots of baby chicks before Jesus came along. I think what we can see in the story of Jesus' birth is a profound lesson, not so much about when love was born into the world, but how it's born into the world over and over again. Every time we're confronted with the vulnerability, the preciousness, the neediness of another person, another life. That's how love reaches us and does its amazing, miraculous work within each of us. Amen. Thank you, Sue and Larry and Laureen. Let's open our hearts for prayer. God of hope and peace and joy and love, we give thanks that we are in a place where we can get connected together so we can celebrate the great good news of the birth of Jesus. It's a story about light in the darkness, about warmth in a cold place. It's a story about kindness and comfort in a time of fear. It's a story about new life. The story of the birth of Jesus happened more than 2,000 years ago in a part of the world very different from where we live. Some things about life in this world have not changed very much. They're not all that different from that, from that time and that place. The world still needs good news. 
We still need light and warmth and kindness and comfort. We still need new life. God, we know people who need these things. People who feel lost and alone. People who are in grief for recent losses and long-remembered ones. People who are in pain. Those who are sick. And those who are dying. We live in a place of relative safety and security and peace. Too many of God's children are living in fear. We pray especially for children and families who live below the poverty line, those who live in dangerous places, those who are looked down upon because of their language, their country of origin, their religion, or the color of their skin. God, we pray for a world where the last shall be first and the weak shall be strong and none shall be afraid. We make our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to continue in prayer using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Larry. Our commissioning and blessing. Love comes as a spiritual blessing and brings with it the capacity to endure, 
even when life feels difficult, perhaps overwhelming. We pray for the blessing of love for ourselves, for those we will encounter as we leave this place, and for our world. We pray for the blessing of God the Creator, God the Spirit, and the God we meet in Jesus. Amen.